This question I hear in counseling all the time. People asking, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause something to happen? And why me? And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was just, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was kind, why do such calamities happen? The word in Arabic we use for calamities is musibah. And when one musibah happens to a person, one difficulty happens, they'll say, why is this happening to me? When the second one happens, what I often find people saying is they'll say, maybe there's something wrong with me that this keeps happening, that things keep happening to me. By the third musibah, or the third difficulty that someone encounters, now they're starting to say something like, why is this happening and what kind of religion is this? Now they're questioning the sun. And they're saying, what kind of God is this that is sending down these kind of calamities? This is the progression that we see. It's a very common progression. And this is exactly why I'm very glad that Brother Abdullah asked us to speak about this topic because the difference between having a difficulty happening and walking out altogether of the religion is not that many steps apart from each other. And this is why we need to have these conversations. And have them regularly and actively. SubhanAllah. Before, when I was young, and part of this community and younger, often the conversations that were worried about the youth were always like, sisters, brothers, don't look at each other, don't talk to each other, I, I, bad, bad. Right? It was a lot of focus on, you know, boys, girls, drugs, etc. This was always kind of the conversation. Today I say all those things are still problems, but the losing of Iman is a bigger calamity that all of us are really experiencing. I don't know that I heard that much of it when I was growing up, but certainly now it's a common place. And this is why the conversation has to happen because when you peel back enough layers, usually like the ABC Chef Ron said, usually there's something that happened that then caused the person to ask questions that that caused the doubt and made them want to then question their deen altogether. So I thought what I would do is really go to the Qur'an and see who in the Qur'an complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who do you think that is? Think of a prophet who complains to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's more than one. Who? Okay, lots of prophets being <laughs> suggested. MashaAllah. I heard Sayyidina Nur. I heard Sayyidina Ayyub. Sayyidina. So, mashallah, there are so many. Alhamdulillah. Who in the Quran, let me give, give, give an easier hint. Who in the Quran says, Innama ashku? Oh, he uses the word shakwa. Who is this? Sayyidina Yaqub. Sayyidina Yaqub. He literally says, Oh Allah, I complain to you. Let's complete the ayah. So let's let's kind of figure this ayah out together. Right? I literally say, Oh Allah, I complain to you. When people go, you can complain to Allah. A prophet such as Yaqub, Sayyidina Yaqub is complaining to Allah, yes. And here's where I want to make a distinction. The difference between human issues and calamities that we experience and complaining, which apparently is possible to do if done appropriately. And then there are inappropriate ways of complaining, which we'll talk about too. But look what he says, because people talk about mental health all the time. They say, really, is this part of our deen? Really? If you just prayed more, if you just had more iman, wouldn't this be enough? And I say, did you not read Sayyidina Yaqub in the Qur'an? Did you not read Surah Yusuf? Did we miss this chapter? He's literally saying, إِنَّ مَا أَشْكُوا what? بَنْبِي وَحُزْنِي Somebody translate for me. What does that mean? What is that? No. It's a hem. But it's a deep deep grief. The word betha means to disperse or dispel, very widespread, something that's been spread out. So here when he says, it means something that's so deep, 
What's the story of Seyyidina Yaqub? What is he complaining about? Losing Sayyidina Yusuf, his son. But in this part of the surah, he's also received news of losing who else? Sayyidina Ben Yamin. Two sons. Two. So at this point, he's saying, he turns to Allah and he says, Inna ma'ashubathi wa huzni. What's huzn? Yes. Deep grief and deep sadness. Now the ayah before this, it literally says, Right? Somebody explain. There's a difference of opinion of what this exactly means. Some people say that he went well, blind. Others say it could be something that all we know is it's definitely something where it's difficult for him to see. The point is, why? From all the crying. And people say, is it okay to cry in Islam? Is it okay to be depressed and stuff? Is it okay to be angry? And I say, have you not read about Sayyidina Yaqub? Listen, we have to be very clear. This is a man, this is a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Nabi. This is a person who has received revelation from Allah. This is a person whose sons are going to become anbiya to. This is a Nabi of Allah. And yet, he is complaining of grief and sadness and crying and crying and crying. Some people say, some of the scholars say, the difference between when he lost Sayyidina Yusuf and when he found, when he was later found, right, when he was able to rejoin the family, was something like 25 to 30 years. Of what? Of crying. Why am I making a big deal of this? Because in my field of mental health, I hear too many people say, if you just pray more, you don't think Sayyidina Abdul prayed? If you had better iman, you don't think Sayyidina Abdul had a good iman? What was he crying about? Because it was serious calamities. This is not easy. And then he says, I know from Allah what you don't know. So let me be. So then we understand. There was a difference of how you complain. When you complain that's appropriate, in a positive manner, you list out the facts. You say, Ya Allah, I lost Sayyidina Yusuf. He was taken away from me. Ya Allah, now Ben Yameen, he was taken away from me. But you do not say what Sheikh Rabbi said earlier. Why? How come? Why me? This, the word that you were looking for earlier, Sheikh Rabbi, he said, I'atirat. Because we call this I'atirat. I was thinking of the translation when you asked, what's the translation? To refute the will of Allah. That's the difference between a shakla, a complaint, which is literally just listing out, oh Allah, this happened, and this happened, and this bad thing happened, and look at my pitiful state, ya Allah, you know. You know what happened to me. But i'tirad is saying, why me? How come? That's the difference. And that's what's not appropriate. And that's what Sayyidina Yaqub does not do. You see? He complains. The word is in the Quran. Shakwa. He literally complains. But he does not. He does not push back. Right? And ask and say, Allah, why did you do this? And nor is something very important. Nor does he try to elicit sympathy from other people. Ah, this is really important. Because before and after this ayah, he says a very beautiful Ayah, part of an ayah that we all love. Fasalbun Jamid. Right? It's the famous thing we know about Sayyidina Yaqub, a beautiful patience. Because there could be patience that's not beautiful. You see, there's different kinds of patience. But Sayyidina Yaqub's patience is a beautiful patience. Why? Because some of the scholars say because he complains to Allah, but not to the people. Even when his other sons say, are you going to keep crying until you pass away and die from this? Right there, they're like mocking him. And he turns away from them. Right? And he says, I know what Allah, I know what you don't know from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he complains only to Allah. Now let me tell you something. Some people hear this and they say, okay, so if bad things happen to me, I should complain. And not act it, right? I should list out the issues that have happened to me, but not say why me. And I should say only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a beautiful patience. But look, there's a hadith of the Prophet 
where he talks clearly about what happens when you feel that you have such issues that are happening to you and you need help. Because we're not prophets. We are ordinary people that need help when helping. When we need the help, we need to seek out the help. So for me, you know the hadith that really like really sits with me very well. It's a hadith where the Prophet says, and this hadith is so fitting because we're just coming out of, we're still in the pandemic, but we're just kind of come to that a year ago, one year ago. Could we be sitting like this together? We weren't. It was all closed. COVID happened, and we said to ourselves, we need to quarantine, we need to shelter at home. But there was a push for everybody around the world globally to find something to help with COVID and to find vaccines. Where does that spark come from? See, the Muslims always had it because they knew a very powerful hadith that the Prophet spoke about. What am I talking about? There's a beautiful hadith, actually several of them, but one narration I'll tell you, where the Prophet says, Allah. Seek out cures, O servants of Allah. The rest of the hadith is beautiful too, because it literally, he literally says, I'll translate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yeah, he teaches Safa. The Prophet says, teaches the Prophet to say, to teach us to seek out cures, O servants of Allah. Because Allah will not send down an illness, except that He also sends its cure. And this doesn't mean that it falls out of the sky, my friends. This means that people work night and day to find treatments and vaccines for COVID, for example. What about our emotional difficulties? What about our emotional struggles? What about what we were talking about here earlier? Same. Same. It's the same thing. That if Allah sends down for some people difficulties mental health-wise, He also sends for its treatments. So when people say, oh, I should just have good iman and just complain only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you're forgetting this part of the teaching as well which is to get the help when you need the help. Why am I saying this? Because for so many, it started off the whole conversation by saying, in counseling, I find that so many people have these three steps. They start off with the first Mosiba, and what do they say? What do they say? What did I say at the beginning? Yes, exactly, why me? The second Mosiba happens, difficulty, what happens? What do they say? What's, maybe it's me. Maybe there's something wrong with me. The third Mosiba happens, and what do they say? What's wrong with this religion when they walk away? Part of the solution for this is a deepening of Iman, yes. But part of the solution also is helping people become resilient to the difficulties that are coming their way. A part of becoming resilient is teaching resilience. People aren't born resilient, necessarily. And so I remind us of this hadith, and I remind us how the Prophet told us that with every illness, he also sends a cure. And it's not just illnesses like COVID. It's also our emotional difficulties. And alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, we have now services and people in our communities that are actually are able to counsel and are actually able to guide people and to help them when they're feeling this way, like, is it something with me that's wrong? Is there something with Islam that's wrong? That they're able to guide them on some of this discussion. And so I encourage you, inshallah ta'ala, to think about Sayyidina Yaqub and to think about how he complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he did so appropriately, subhanAllah, right? Without i'tirat. And then also the hadith of the Prophet of seeking out help when needed. And inshallah, because I know it's close to that, it will close, and I just want to tell you, alhamdulillah, um, I have some flyers out here because there's a really wonderful program that's happening, inshallah, this Sunday, in which some of our wonderful speakers, it's on the eve of Arafah, and Imam Zayd Shakir is going to be speaking at it, and Sister Daniel Mugahed, Sister uh, Zahra Bidu, Dr. Hatim Bazian, and myself. And inshallah, it's actually about mental health. All of the different traumas that we've been experiencing this last year, everything from last summer and all the racial injustice, followed by so many acts of Islamophobia, as you guys know, followed by SubhanAllah, and all throughout and continuing all the issues that are happening in Palestine. There are so many calamities, as you know, throughout the world in the Muslim Ummah and in the in humanity in general. And I feel as a community, we've had so many calamities and difficulties 
then there are so many people that are just questioning. They're asking exactly why me? And is there something wrong with this dean? It's not the dean, my sisters and brothers. It's actually our lack of seeking assistance fully from it. And also from the people who know how to guide us fully into getting help when we need to get that kind of help for our youth and for our adults the same. So I welcome you to the program, inshallah. I have some flyers up here for you. For that, it's a new inshallah center that I'm hoping inshallah to build out on Muslim mental health and spirituality called Madistan. And it's named after the traditional Madistans of our Muslim community of the past. The Madistans were Muslim hospitals. And what was so beautiful is that they didn't just have areas of the hospital where they fixed a broken leg or where they did a surgery. But they were the first in the humanity that had wards, sections of a hospital that were dedicated to mental health. Because Muslims, early Muslims understood mind, body, and soul. They're all connected. And you cannot treat one without treating the other. And so I hope, inshallah, we'll revive this concept of the maddest dance and we'll have them all throughout the world again, inshallah. So with that, I'll close. Barakallahu feekum wa sallallahu ma'ala Sayyidina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم